Question. Did Saturday night's performance look like the number three team in the country to you? But, of course, you can also say, too, okay, well, Baylor, okay, the Baylor Bears. Did that look like a winless team, a team that hadn't won a regular season game in about a year since last October to you? As soon as you got to come ready to play every week, you got to come ready to perform. Yes, even in the world of college football where you're a four-touchdown favorite against a team that last week – uh, only made one third down conversion that only completed 12 of 34 passes and a team that had three interceptions against Duke. A team that had almost no offense against Texas San Antonio and a team that lost to Liberty. Where in the hell is Liberty? I know. And, and I'm going to tell you what, I gave Baylor a lot of shit on my weekly matchup show. I said that this is a team that's going nowhere and to Matt Rule's credit, to Baylor's credit, they played like that was a college football playoff game. They played like everything was on the line. They showed a lot of guts. They showed a lot of grit. And you give the Baylor credit crowd for trying to keep their team in the game. I give Baylor a lot of props because I'm telling you what, there were times in which they were kicking Oklahoma's tail. So I give Baylor credit because I'm telling you what, I don't know, Sooner fans, how you felt midway through the third quarter with OU down 31-28. I mean, personally, I was half pissed and I was half freaking out, right? Because at that point, the Sooners uh, had four straight possessions in which they didn't score. In fact, a three and out and, and a fumble, um, you know, later on with uh, Marquise Brown, uh, which would set up a Baylor field goal eventually. And again, we'll break down the rest of the game later. But before I go any further, don't get me wrong. You take the win, okay? You, you never reject victory. There is a fine line between winning and losing. The Sooners got the W. Very important to mention that because on Saturday in college football, boy, we saw some surprises. You know, Florida State, you think they would take a win? Absolutely, after surprisingly getting beat by North Carolina State. And, of course, there's that team in northeast Oklahoma named Oklahoma State. They were a double-digit favorite, and they lost at home to TCU. So, yeah, Sooner fans, it could have been a lot worse. And, yes, this game was in doubt to, to my shock and to the shock of so many across the country. Because I'm sure midway through the third quarter, went on the ticker on the bottom of the screen of any game you're watching, and it said Baylor 31, Oklahoma 28, third quarter. You're thinking, oh, my gosh, what's happening in Oklahoma? They're getting beat by a team that hadn't won a game in forever, or a regular season game in forever. What's going on? But the Sooners pulled it together and get the W. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. But when you break down this game, you saw some things that Baylor was effective at that they really weren't um, in those last two regular season games against UT San Antonio and against Duke. For one, Baylor had a consistent passing game. And Zach Smith, he looked like Aaron Rodgers on Saturday night. Um, threw for over 460 yards. Did not have any interceptions. Remember, he had three against Duke, and he threw for three touchdowns. And the big play was on the side of both teams in this game. But Baylor, in the second and third quarter, really utilized the big play. And the thing that stunned me the most about this game um, was the fact that Baylor was going after Jordan Thomas' side. Jordan Thomas, the terrific corner, and he's still a terrific corner, by the way. One game doesn't change that. I think for Jordan Thomas, it was a bad night. It was a bad night. There was one touchdown that Baylor threw. It was over 70 yards. Um, you know, they threw it to Denzel Mims, and uh, Thomas wasn't aggressive enough. He wasn't. Terrific throw by Smith down the sideline, and then Thomas tries to make a tackle, and he falls down like a domino. That was one. And then another play later on where Thomas is too aggressive, goes for the interception. Smith throws a fine pass out of the reach of Thomas into the hands of Chris Platt, another 70-yard-plus touchdown. Oklahoma had not given up a touchdown pass after three games. Had not given up a single TD pass entering this matchup with the Bears. But that quickly changed. They gave up at least three. I think it was, no, they gave up four, actually. They gave up four on Saturday night. And one was on part of Motley's side, but Baylor primarily wasn't attacking Motley's side. They were attacking Thomas' side, which in games past, was just the opposite. And to make matters worse, toward the end of the game, 
uh, Thomas had to leave because of injury. I don't know if it was an ankle. I don't know if it was the foot or, or the leg. I don't know. We'll find more about it later. Hopefully, it's nothing serious, and hopefully, he'll be ready to go against Iowa State. Remember, the Sooners have a bye week. Thank goodness. But the Sooners just did not get enough pressure on Zach Smith. They did a good job. I'll, I'll give the Sooners defense credit for holding Baylor's running attack in check. They did one heck of a job in that. But with the game 28-10, to 10, Oklahoma looked like the Sooners were in the driver's seat. The big play started becoming more and more apparent for the Baylor offense, and for the secondary, it was a horrible night. I mean, it was Denzel Mims. It was Chris Platt at times, Tony Nicholson. And remember, too, Baylor had a touchdown drop um, to the running back um, later on in the game. So it, it could be immersed. Remember, Baylor had a missed field goal as well. So as, as many points as Baylor scored in this game to our shock, 41, and having a shot at the end down by one possession after recovering an onside kick, at least the Sooners get out with the win. And again, that's that, that's all that matters. But Sooners have a lot to work on during this bye week. First of all, they got to get healed up because they had, they had players dinged up. Stephen Parker, you know, got dinged up a little bit on a um, on punt coverage. And of course, we mentioned Jordan Thomas earlier. So you know, they've got time to recover. And we always say, you know, how important bye weeks are, and it's good time for a bye week for the Sooners. This isn't a good time for a bye week. It's the perfect time for one physically. And right now, in between the years, mentally. The center defense, in terms of the run, was terrific. Again, Baylor barely got over 60 net yards. But in terms of the passing defense, way too many yards sacrificed. It was vulnerable. There were guys out of position. Um, OU just at times was not aggressive enough. And again, there wasn't enough pressure put on Zach Smith. And Zach Smith um, is to be commended in the losing effort for a terrific game. But one thing we have to say, though, in terms of Oklahoma, okay, offensively, they use the big play often. Five plays of at least 20 yards in the first 20 minutes of this game. Baker Mayfield, in my opinion, did not do anything at all to harm his Heisman Trophy chances. Okay, I think he's still the front runner. And again, no interceptions. That's it. No interceptions for Baker Mayfield. There was a couple of moments in this game that you're thinking to yourself, wow. That's something else. One play where he is in a lot of duress in his own end near the goal line, and Baylor's blitzing, and Mayfield stiff arms the defender. What would have been maybe a big loss, a big sack for a lot of quarterbacks. It wasn't for Mayfield. And then later in the game, Sooners threatening, and Baylor all out blitz, and Baylor um, tried to get Mayfield to make a mistake, put pressure on him. Mayfield held in the pocket, took a big hit, and still completed a pass inside the five-yard line. Good game for, for Mark Andrews, by the way, with the game's first score. Um, Jeff Bidette, um with the huge touchdown that gave the Sooners um, the lead at 35-31, to 31, reclaiming the lead. Um, so Baker Mayfield again showing his poise. And, by the way, also overcoming a mistake on a uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty in the third quarter with the Sooners down – by that three-point margin at 31-28, first and 25, after an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty by Mayfield. No problem. Hits Bidette for that touchdown down the sideline, and the Sooners never trailed again. Of course, we mentioned the Sooners' offense coming through they needed to, and the ground game really came through in the second half. Because look at the first half. Other than that 99-yard run by Abdul Adams, the Sooners really had no ground game in, in the first two-and-a-half quarters. In fact, the Sooners hardly ran the ball in that first half. Um, single digits in carries, single digits in yardage if you take away the Abdul Adams run. But Adams um, started the game, and once again, just like against Ohio State, Trey Sermon would finish it. And the thing that you have to say about Baylor, they were going to make sure that after they gave up a lot of passing yards in the first half, that they were going to be more committed to trying to prevent that big play through the air in the second half. We saw at times three-man fronts by Baylor. So what happened was 35-31 Oklahoma and the Sooners needed separation. They relied on Trey Sermon and the ground attack, taking advantage of Baylor's looks. And at that point, Lincoln Riley says, you know what? We don't have to throw the ball to have success. We're going to run it in the second half because, again, different looks. And, of course, it meant that 
the Sooners were going to take advantage of those gaps, and it was Trey Sermon um, taking over and getting some scores to help at that point. The Sooners get a little bit of separation before Baylor made that comeback and just about put a major scare into the Sooners in the final couple of minutes of the game. 49-41 OU, Baylor, you know, recovers an onside, and I'm thinking, uh-oh, here we go again. But Obo and company come through with the sack. Caleb Killick gets the recovery off the fumble, and the Sooners are able to get out of Waco with a W. So, again, the big plays for Oklahoma offensively in the first half were huge. The second half, primarily the ground attack in the last quarter and change. And, again, you have to be ready to play every week. Baylor was, the Sooners were not. And it's no wonder that this game, based upon those approaches, had as much drama as it did. Unnecessary drama, but at least unlike Florida State, at least unlike Oklahoma State, the Sooners are able to overcome a team that they were better than and still get the win. So for the Sooners, we mentioned the bye week. You got Iowa State coming up the week after that. And for uh, Baylor, um, they're 0-4, but they did not play like a winless team. If they, if they play like that throughout the season, they are going to upset somebody. All right? And again, I was very impressed with Zach Smith. I was impressed with the Baylor receivers. And Baylor will be thinking about the missed field goal. They'll be thinking about the uh, the pass that the Baylor running back dropped uh, coming out of the backfield, down the side, wide open, a true freshman. And he, I think it was John Lovett. Yeah, John Lovett. And who knows what might have been after that. Sooners have got to realize, though, that you got to come ready to play all the time. I keep saying it like a broken record, but if you don't, um, TCU is going to beat you. Oklahoma State is going to beat you. Texas could very well beat you. West Virginia, same thing. Um, it's harder to handle success than adversity, so the Sooners have got to come up with a fired-up approach. Secondary-wise, they've got some things to work on. But the big thing for the Sooners right now, get healed up, get mentally right for those last eight games of the season. Sooners get the win. That's all that counts, but it was not a great performance at all, but it was good enough when it had to be. 49-41 against a Baylor team that played a lot better than anybody expected. No week weekly matchup show this next week because there's no game, but we will have my three picks. Keep that in mind. Sooners get the win, but it was no picnic at all. Boomer Sooner.